uh, best uh, SaaS platform that is available. Uh, so there are compromises that have been made. So and and up and top of those kind of a software to build a digital platform is going to make it also very hard. So that's why if you see many of the large traditional companies have started their own uh, venture for, uh, venture uh, organizations. Uh, uh, started, uh, you know, you, uh, recruiting people from outside and uh, developing a digital business in parallel to the traditional uh, logistic services. Great, and I'm I'm happy to see that Vikram is back online. Um, hi, Vikram. Glad Vikram, we still can't hear you. Hi, can others hear Vikram? We can no. see, but can't hear him. No. Okay. Uh, so there's a question for Raghav. Let me take that quickly. Um, the question is, what do you think about the current calls of boycott, uh, of boycotting China, especially in the startup ecosystem? And this question yeah, so, is uh, there are two aspects to this. One is, you know, when it comes to technology uh, perspective, uh, to building out the infrastructure uh, requirement, the cost perspective from a Chinese uh, you know, vendor is still much uh, cheaper than the Indian vendor and they can implement at scale very fast. Now, the point is that we need to get to a point where we can uh, have a similar price point with that quality to, you know, uh, replace the Chinese uh, vendor. So I think uh, that that is where uh, A, the manufacturing capacities have to go up in India because we don't have that scale at this point in time. Uh, there are a few companies which are doing that, but I think that needs to uh, increase in number. Um, secondly, we need to have that uh, for startups, we need to have the product developers. So we, uh, from my angel network, Calcutta Angels, we invested in startups uh, which are doing high tech work as well. But uh, Bangalore and maybe uh, parts of Gurugram are the only places where we saw product developers who could make those products. So if you're talking about even replacing apps uh, like TikTok and others, uh, you still have to outsource the product development uh, to US and you know parts of Silicon Valley. So I think uh, skill development is another area where we need to set up infrastructure related uh, you know, uh, programs, uh, which will upgrade the skill of the technical knowledge of the engineers from basic programming and product development to more enhanced level of uh, product development. So one is on the infrastructure, manufacturing and scale side, and one is on the skill development. So I think these two things, if we manage to do, then maybe over a period of time, we can sort of uh, become Atmanirbhar in these areas. Okay. That, that, that's a great point. But what is going to be the short term impact of such uh, boycott calls on the uh, startup sector? Um, the immediate impact I see is cash uh, because a lot of cash was coming from uh, Chinese conglomerates and venture capital funds, uh, which were funding the large uh, startups in India, whether you look at uh, Ola uh, or Flipkart of the world. Uh, so American money has been coming in and Chinese money. And of course, you have the big Japanese fund. So we will have to create a... Uh, uh, ecosystem of venture capital funds also raising large amounts of money from uh, local LPs. So till now we had institutional investors like LICs of the world, SIDBs of the world uh, who are investing in local venture capital funds from India. But that number needs to increase. Uh, individuals need to start investing more in startups. And uh, like uh, Mr. Shetty mentioned, you need to have corporate family offices also who have certain sector expertise to start looking at investing in early stage companies. Uh, so the immediate short term constraint, which I see is in terms of capital, which will be affected from China. Yeah, I think uh, Diksha just dropped, it looks like. Oh, the moderator is gone. Yeah. 
Yeah, I think the other problem, uh, Raghav, just to piggyback on you, like with the uh, with the whole kind of environment that's going on, which is negative Chinese, is also on the debt side. Like if you look at the loan books of a lot of fintech companies, uh, they are uh, backed by uh, kind of Chinese uh, banks, Chinese funds, you know, uh, which is like uh, not on the equity side. And I think there's a lot of kind of a negative uh, vibe going on there. uh and that's that's uh, that's definitely impact to to fintech companies companies that are purely giving out loan uh short term loans in india like early salary for example is one one such kind of company that i know very well uh based out of pune uh uh they they uh, it, it's 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 a negative impact just just the overall overall vibe and negativity around chinese uh, around china and chinese uh, vc companies Yeah, I mean, I I would agree. Also, I don't know if you guys can hear me, and I think uh, definitely uh, what Jitesh said also, and Jitesh, you being here, you probably concur. Is that we have the same feeling or the same sort of sentiment going on here? You know, blaming it on the Chinese virus, and then saying, okay, we have to kind of boycott everything that's Chinese. But I I think that bus has left the station. It's going to be very tough for all the companies. US companies I'm talking about specifically that's already invested in China just like what Raghav said Indian companies that are dependent on it to just shut their shops and move somewhere where else where can you really get scale and quality at that price I mean and these global companies are not really going to you know all of a sudden change the game on that so I think the political sort of saber rattling would at you know probably be for a while maybe during election years but i think the reality is that you know the global uh, cooperation has to be there for business and that is something that we cannot a- avoid and and the more we get into the digital world uh, like how we are doing business uh, the more i think we re- realize that you know all of this is completely fruitless you know what we are doing but just focusing on because the boundaries have are completely blurred in any case what are we talking about there is no boundary today right so from a business standpoint i think um, it just makes sense to figure out how we work together um, at at the same time not make a mess of the political situation but i i do believe that um, we are going through a very tough time here in the us and i hope that india doesn't go that route that's my hope i think shashi uh, can you hear me uh, yeah i know there's something wrong with my platform connectivity i think uh i think i are you on mute uh, vikram mr shashi we can hear you i'm on i'm on uh, can you hear me now i don't know my video is on but uh, Yeah, yeah Vikram, we can hear you. Okay, I think there's some problem with the platform because the video was on and the I can't see Diksha. So, but hi everybody, hi, uh, hi Shashi, hi Vikram here. Hi, hi, hi everybody. Hi. Okay, <laughs> can I can't you. <laughs> I know, I know. I and then I couldn't see the host also in the middle, so it was a little confusing. The whole thing is, yeah. So anyway. I, I can't. See, uh, the only thing I uh, th- thank you. I mean, you guys can hear me now, so I know the moderator is not uh, yeah. there. Okay. Right. So yeah, but I've been hearing the great points that you guys made, so it is good. I think. So shall we wait for the moderator? Yeah, or? I think. I think. Let me let me uh, make a short point uh, to what yeah. Jitesh and uh, the other gentleman forget your name. Sorry, uh, from Rahul. the U.S. made that I think Rahul. the world has to learn to live with the virus. What they say, I will add to that. We have to learn to live with also China, right? <laughs> and we have to, you know, also live with the new normal post this COVID and the crisis and. the digital disruptions which is already yeah. been bothering many of us and you know we have to learn to live with all this new normal going forward china is not going to go away china is not going to change it is like yeah. it's almost impossible to replace china in a short run it is going to take time they are the second largest economy in the world we should not forget that and you know they have created such a massive scale and such a massive infrastructure and the manpower to manufacture for the whole world 
and and which country can replace it india stands a good chance but where are we we are we are 10 years behind 20 years behind right and and our government is still not able to make the bold decisions they lost so many opportunities uh, uh, to get uh, get to be a true competitor to china and we are missing the bus each time and i don't think our government is even doing anything even today you know i suggest in in some of the conferences that two things if they do uh, that can make a bold real impact one is they had a, a special economic zone policy right and that was used for land grabbing in the past we all know that right and they scrapped the whole thing and people lost so much of money confidence faith and everything so there is there has been no real policy predictability in our country that is the biggest problem every government comes and comes something with something different right and how does the investor have confidence when each government comes and changes take a simple example of telangana the previous chief minister wanted to build a new capital and the new chief minister comes and scraps the whole damn thing right i said isn't that a joke uh -huh. so much of money time effort has been spent and how he can have a authority to change something like that such drastic things the governments of our country can change so there is predictability is the biggest issue to me number one number two they could revive the special economic zone policy you know vivad se vishwas okay forget what happened in the past we'll forgive you for whatever you have done in the past okay let's revive the special economic economic zone which is the backbone of manufacturing in any country because you have your own laws for labor your own laws for taxation your own laws for all the other ease of doing business norms in a special economic zone that is what special economic zones supposed to be so why can't we fix that why can and there is land bank sitting everything outside the port so mundra has about a lakhs acre of land okay krishna patnam has about 10 or 20000 acres of land uh uh jnpt has uh, land there are many other places where you can acquire land and you know all this has to be facilitated by one single agency and deliver that confidence to the investor fraternity and uh, and uh, and make a law that nobody can change the law once the law has been made you know at least for 20 years so Sashi. that's the good pressure yeah, so absolutely very good i think very good points yeah yeah excellent points Yeah, just just to add to that, right? Uh, what uh, uh, you know, if you think about it at a very meta level, what drives globalization is purely market, purely kind of you know markets drive uh, globalization, right? And money travels. There is no way to reverse that. There is no way to say that you know you cannot outsource this to China and you cannot pay a vendor in China from uh, if I'm a US uh, software developer. who relies on one hardware product that gets developed in shanghai uh, there is there is no policy really to stop me from like uh, 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 paying them right uh, and at the end of the day all of these capitalist societies they will not make a policy that will stop uh, uh, that will make markets inefficient so em emotions won't drive that uh, yeah. market drives that so it will stay uh, you know china is going to stay it will uh, uh, be a very viable player on the manufacturing side yeah yeah you know sorry to can add you, one can point can you hear me now yeah, yeah we, we can, can. Okay. we can hi diksha i don't know diksha is not there so i think i think shashi you made some awesome points because yes unpredictability in the land thing i was hearing some points about education even education as a business has become um, a land issue like ports have become a land issue so i think uh, we have to look at but i personally i don't know whether you agree with me but uh, i personally feel that this infrastructure thing right from independence time has a little bit of a cyclical thing there has to be inorganic push followed by a period of organic peace then again some inorganic push so what i thought was that uh, globally uh, everybody's got a inorganic push and that inorganic push for infrastructure has come because of either because of war or some nationalism cause if you look at uh, you know post war europe and japan you know that was an inorganic push you look at the cold war in let's say in the in the, in the us got its inorganic push over there even china and then cyclically they followed up with a very nice uh, organic period when there was predictability of laws and everything was going at the same speed so in our case i don't see that cycle happening we've not had such a 
uh, inorganic push either because of war or anything. So, you know, if we look at it, uh, we can broadly divide it into three. The post-independence, there was a, you know, kind of a fervent pitch of a lot of infrastructure development. And then uh, 20 years after that, we lost it completely with this uh, uh, mixed economy, socialism kind of a model. Then again, out of 90s, again, we came up with one more burst of inorganic push to infrastructure, which was, I think, more because of frustration than anything else. And uh, then again, we lost it after that, uh, the organic part, we lost it. And now again, I think we are back to that inorganic push cycle right now, because uh, whatever you say, whether nationalism or pride or whatever, so that has come, at least people have started talking in terms of uh, number of roads, kilometers that have been built. But yes, I mean, uh, the port turnaround, Shashi would know that, you know, still we are the largest, longest turnaround types at Indian ports. I mean, earlier the super tankers didn't come here, but now, of course, they come. But then the turnaround times are huge. So I think we've kind of lost this uh, whole cycle of uh, inorganic push start followed by a nice little organic, predictable, organic kind of uh, growth roadmap for infrastructure. That is one. The second thing I feel is that... Um, you know, I think any infrastructure development has to happen uh, with a lot of uh, intellectual development. We've kind of lost it, very honestly, and that's where education plays a huge. Our education infrastructure is in a mess. In fact, when we say our education, it is not our education, quite honestly. So we have to develop some kind of, uh, uh, you know, our own models uh, of education, which will kind of uh, keep uh, some focus on our Indian models, so Indian infrastructure models can can develop. So I think that cyclical, uh, organic, inorganic infrastructure development, we lost. Then we started look. In fact, uh, we lost a huge revolution in the middle. We jumped straight from agriculture to services. And that was one of the prime reasons, in my view, that we lost this whole uh, game plan. The industry completely collapsed. We, uh, in 90s, we switched from agriculture straight to uh, services and industry and SME and MSME and what's happening right now, we lost that. So that was one of the most critical aspects. I think now the need, in my view, apart from predictability, which is a very, very important point, is uh, I think we need to look at some, uh, probably some rural first model, apart from the digital infrastructure, which, you know, all you people are masters at the digital game. So that is happening. But we need to now get into probably a rural first kind of a model, uh, the infrastructure play field has to be such that individual entrepreneurs come and play a huge game and make the economy grow, create jobs. I think that's where I think there is a strategic vision plan which was missed out over the last uh, 50 to 60 years. I kind of uh, agree in part to what Shashi is saying, but I think now at least a long term vision is being put in place to whatever it's uh, worth, whether good or bad. But I think there's some chance has to be given for that. And hopefully, I'm pretty positive over the next 30, 40 years, uh, things are going to look good. Of course, we have to live with China. We have to live with the whole world. I mean, we can't wish away uh, these guys. These momentary battles are not going to you know, kind of change the global economy. It's finally the world is one place. So uh, I hope I've not taken too much time. But I thought since my speaker started last. <laughs> so, <laughs> so good to see you all. I don't know. I can't see Diksha here. But I think, uh, I think she's back. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. 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 To, to add to your point, Vikram, is yeah. uh, that uh, if uh, the economy which was growing at 8, 8.5% is, is collapsed to zero or negative, yeah. what more push one needs to do the inorganic uh, uh, revolutionary reforms so <laughs> India can bounce back and, and focus only on manufacturing the make in India, yeah. is, this is the moment. This is absolutely, the time. Absolutely. But inorganic session cannot be by design. It happens automatically. Inorganic opportunities come because of not reasons that you plan. It just happens. I mean, independence happened. After that, the dams were built and the power plants were built. I mean, it just happened. After that, 20 years, we did nothing. Then suddenly the 90s came up. So we've got to be lucky to or rather be uh, as, a, as a culture. We've not had too many. We've been a peaceful culture for thousands of years. So we don't we haven't looked at any uh, inorganic boost. So we've been the organic pace is pretty slow and steady. I think the only industry in my view, Shashi, which has made uh, great progress just out of organic things is our space research. I think it's amazing. I mean, if there is truly genuine global Indian brand today is probably ISRO, in my view. I mean, what Tesla is doing and SpaceX is doing over there is what is happening in India. And so organic will grow slowly and steadily. 
but uh, you know for example now with this china thing whatever is worth i mean it's kind of if to take it as an inorganic push and it will drive industry so that will happen but but the worst thing that will happen now is if we don't follow it up with organic predictability of laws that is the most important thing. most important i think yeah. that's what is important shashi absolutely agree with you yeah yeah Yeah, I had a point uh, to discuss when we have little bit of time left. Is where is the capital going to come from? Because I think for digital we need one trillion dollars. For hard assets we need one point four trillion dollars, or approximately. So two and a half trillion dollars of capital. Um, how do we really get this uh, infrastructure going? Is one is of course the bond issuances and public-private partnership. But where is this capital going to come from? Is a question that i had in my mind and of course we can do private equity and joint ventures but a lot of equity is required to build this infrastructure so you you are probably are you talking of only the digital infrastructure or some uh, of the general infrastructure both i mean hard assets okay. would require 1 and 1/2 trillion digital would require 1 yeah. trillion so about 2 and 1/2 trillion dollars yeah of capital we have to find a way <laughs> <laughs> You have to find it, Raghav. Money is there, right? Trump is printing, so we have to find a way to bring it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, but but infrastructure. I think the base infrastructure. I mean, uh, look at what Reliance has done in 50 days. You know, 15 billion dollars. I mean, at the end of the day, if you allow people, I'm you know, I think the the hallmark of any country and its economy growing is the number of first generation entrepreneurs. I mean, in that regard, uh, you know. Um, uh, some of us over here and a first generation and number of first generation entrepreneurs if we let them lose after the infrastructure is set up uh, they'll find the ways and means you know but of course you cannot replace government spending on hard infrastructure by private players they can't do it i mean you can't have uh, an all cargo logistics spending money on ports all the time at the end of the day the base level infrastructure has to be done and on top of that then entrepreneurs will have to play and that game now that means whether you want to do increase money supply whether you want to do private equity whether you want to print more you know these are larger macroeconomic factors i'm sure sensitivities will be gauged and and they'll do i'm quite happy that no more money is being printed at this point of time at least otherwise it will be a knee jerk reaction like what happened in the us you know you suddenly start printing and then you suddenly and then it gets into an inflationary uh, kind of. the other thing i don't know whether you share my opinion on this but i feel the Uh, western economies have a over inflated currency in any case uh, so uh, over the next 4 or 5 years uh, let's let's see if that is going to be a big key because uh, look at the dollar is i think over inflated the euro is over inflated that puts a huge amount of pressure rather it's a entry barrier for developing economies to actually enter uh, the game of infrastructure so uh, you know then you perforce have to uh, raise foreign money and then you perforce have to be you know rely on expensive currency and it puts a lot of pressure on economy like ours so i think currency hedging and currency fluctuation is playing a huge amount of game plan or rather a spoil sport in our economy i think i i i think that has to be really looked at the exchange rate money supply uh, and interest rates these are the three things which the government have, will have to really really look at very closely and so not in a just fashion that the us was looking at you know i think yes. we've yeah. run out of time now and uh, can you hear me yeah yeah yes 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 yeah, great so we've run out of time so i just I, i would just love it if all the speakers can make some closing remarks i think we've had a lively discussion despite all the technical glitches so why don't you uh, begin shashi yeah uh, so to add to the point of uh, as a closing remark as add to the point of vikram uh, you know i think if the government facilitates entrepreneurs to do business and get out of her way right like how it happened in the it sector how it happened in the airline industry there again they interfered and made a mess of it that's another part but still it is a growing sector great airports have been built great companies have been built uh the 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 law was again not predictable and uh, you know uh, you know the entire story of jet and all that i don't need to repeat if you don't allow those kind of a story to happen again by lending money uh you know uh, irresponsibly this the kind of things are still to happen but if you allow uh, look at manufacturing look at banking and uh, look at infrastructure also i feel the private entrepreneurs can can come and build great businesses even today o- only thing government has to do bring a predictable policy and get out of the way 
Absolutely. Bring a predictable policy. That's very insightful, Raghav. Yeah, I think uh, when it comes to infrastructure, in my experience, you need to have uh, from the entrepreneur side accountability as well, because a lot of capital flow has been going into uh, SME sector, especially, and there are a huge amount of NPAs over there. So I think on the private funding side, the asset liability mismatch is huge, and and the companies have to keep uh, you know pushing the entrepreneurs to pay back on time. But uh, on the second point, the government. Of course, there has to be policy framework as we move to the new normal post-COVID. And given the renewable energy push, push uh, of even things like electronic vehicle charging infrastructure, there has to be policy predictability because there is a lot of confusion. Great, um, Avi, do you want to add something about the digital infrastructure? Yeah, yeah. I think I would just stick to my, you know, the early points is that I think digital infrastructure for the bottom of the pyramid can truly unleash India's potential. All the growth rates that we have been talking about, I think, in a post-COVID world, mostly, and I think it's going to be definitely possible if we can unleash. Let's start at the bottom of the pyramid. It's definitely possible. Let's start at the bottom of the pyramid. Jitesh? Yeah, I think it comes down to that, right? The government has to be in the business of providing very few services, very, very foundational services that levels the playing ground like healthcare education very basic security uh, very basic like uh, international foreign affairs it has to get out of the way uh, of of uh, entrepreneurs of corporates of foreign direct investment uh, there is way too much uh, complexity today uh, both at the central government level and at the state level so, you know, if you're trying to either make an investment or you're trying to bootstrap a company, uh, it is it is way, way complicated. The, the ease to uh, do business index, even we, uh, today we do really bad. It does not, you know, with all the marketing that happens uh, that the government does, it does not show up, but we are st still like very low. So, you know, we have to, the government has to be in the business of providing very foundational services that moves the needle forward for people who are extremely uh, at, at the bottom of the pyramid. They have to be there. Healthcare, education are two things that I deeply care about. Uh, but then other things, they have to get out of the way. They have to make it very, very easy. There has to be a cohesion between the way the central government and state governments work. Even though the same party is not ruling, you know, there has to be a cohesion. Okay. Thank you. Um, Vikram? Yeah, so I think I was the last to get on. So I've made my points, but I personally feel that, uh, you know, we need to develop our own uh, Indian models. I think there is this uh, uh, there is this run towards following international and infrastructure models established. While there is a lot of merit over there, I think in our country, we've got certain unique uh, requirement, right? From ports to electricity to roads, you know, some basic fundamental infrastructure needs haven't yet been fulfilled for whatever reasons. Let's not get into that. But those have to be first fulfilled then look at the economic indices our exchange rates and money supplies and interest rates and then leave the entire thing loose to entrepreneurs first generation entrepreneurs new entrepreneurs and just the ability is huge and people will perform so our own indian models a rural first uh, uh, kind of a infrastructure push uh, so that it's more democratic and more balanced and then leave the uh, entrepreneurs to play the game uh, which i'm sure they are more than qualified to do so so let's simplify the processes and copy paste less. Of Shashi, course, with, uh, uh, with, the, with the last point is uh, with the strict enforcement of the law. That is also important, right? Uh, not to allow the right. entrepreneurs also to take advantage of the situation. Create a good level playing field, obviously, right? There have been enough examples of entrepreneurs taking advantage, but those need to be put into rest. Yes. You know, uh, obviously now the banking uh, reforms and all that have NCLT and bankruptcy and all that have come into play and made a huge impact. So these need to be uh, more made more efficient so that people really fear the law before they're breaking it. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's where the legal infrastructure is as much an important part of, you know, you're absolutely right. Legal infrastructure, supply chain, everything. And then let people play on that. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. That's great. Um, unfortunately, we couldn't get into the health infrastructure, but I'm sure there's another session um, in the event for that. Thank you so much for joining today, gentlemen. Uh, we had a great discussion despite all the technical glitches and I hope you enjoy the rest of the event. Thank you very much. Nice meeting all of you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
nice to connect with you all. Thank um, you. See you again. Look forward to having you over in Bangalore if you all come here. I will. Shashi, others I know very well. Yeah. Okay. okay. Right. Right. We will catch up. All right. Yeah. Jitesh, I know well. Right. Also, so. Okay. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Hi, Avi. Please, if you visit Bombay, please get in touch. You get a good. Yeah. yeah yes. Yeah. I am in Calcutta. So anytime coming here, please call me. Yeah. I'll be in right. three sure. cities. Sure. So don't worry. Thank you. Thank you. Just let me in. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Bye-bye. Bye, Diksha. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye, Diksha. Bye. 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 Bye.